Hello folks, Harley Tuck here again with MI Squared. Going to show you how to set up user accounts. It can only be done by an administrator. So your administrator logs in and under the on the left nav menu under administration click on users. Now on a on a brand new system the admin is going to be the only account uh, present. So the admin will then click on add user and a new one will come up. Make up a username for the person. Okay, open EMR's usernames are case sensitive. So if you put capital letters in there, make sure and put them in when you log in. Okay, uh, because if you end up getting that wrong, you're going to have to inactivate the user and then create another one. You can't just delete erroneous users like this. Okay, asterisk fields are all required, of course. Um, username, first name, last name, if they've got a federal tax ID, like a provider or something like that, you'd put that in. Uh, providers have got NPIs, put that in there. Taxonomy is automatically created. Uh, Open EMR doesn't require a uh, state license number, but it is used if present on some of the printouts. And if you've got uh, the uh, new crop ERX, it will it will need to have a license number there and a DEA number if they're going to be prescribing narcotics. That's a whole nother thing. Default warehouse has to do with the inventory system. When you set that up, the, de the different repositories, warehouses will show up here. Uh, I'm going to leave access control for a second. When the administrator is setting up a new user, you put in the user's new password there and then you put in your own administer, administrator's password right here. Okay. Select if this person's a provider. If they're not a provider they don't get to go on the calendar. And there's the open EMR assumes that providers will go on the calendar, but you can take that off if you want. Okay, middle name's not required. Default facility, remember in the last video we've got three facilities, and so this will have to do with like billing. It'll it'll make a note of what other or what facility is this provider, this person's default location. It also has to do with which calendar it shows up on. Uh, in the in the schedule, you know, the appointment schedule. Federal drug ID, if they have them, see authorizations, uh, leave it at only mine or, or none. All if they're if they're going to need to be able to look at all employees works. Calendar UI, uh, it's one of these personalizable displays. Um, new crop ERX role, if you've got it, if you're signing up for ERX, then you will make a setting here, which we don't need to go into. That's covered in the new crop documentation. Invoice reference number pool. If you're using invoice reference number pools, you will have set that up uh, in the globals. And you will select which invoice reference number pool that this provider, this user, works from. Okay, And this additional information is just what, what uh, displays uh, under that, in, that additional info column. See? Right there. It displays in there. Okay, so now this access control, these are the different access capabilities that a user has. Okay, accounting um, is, is different than administrator, which is different than clinicians. There, you know, some of the basics are 
are common to all of the access control levels, but each each person has permission to do some things that nobody else can do. It's a bad idea. I see it a lot, and as far as security goes, you can break your system very easily if you give everybody administrator privilege because they can go in there and they can they can do something nasty to your system without even knowing it um, so you want to keep keep the access controls as unique as possible and appropriate to their actual job description this emergency login here is for the provider who is authorized to break the glass. You've heard of that. There's a discussion on how to configure break the glass in the OpenEMR wiki. This is the access control that authorizes that one user, or the, the user, the predetermined user, to do that. Okay. Otherwise, front office, physicians, patient notes. And then I've customized a little bit here. These are some non-standard access control uh, privileges. Okay, when you're done with that, you hit save. Okay, we've added another user. And here's the additional information that shows up. Yes, they're authorized. They'll show up on the calendar. Oh, and checking my notes, I find that I neglected to mention one thing which is notable. This job description, whatever is put in the job description, will show up in the address book for this person. When you search on, like, specialty or whatever, um, that will search on the content of the job description in the user profile. So, good to know. Okay, like I say, you make any changes, hit save always. Um, if you want to list the inactivated users, click on that. We've got a, we've got a break glass user here that's not showing in the active users because again, part part of the policy is this is an inactive user which an administrator will get in and activate if they have to break the glass. Okay. So your, your user listing can either show <clears throat> all user accounts or just the active ones. And that's it for user configuration.